Guys, welcome to a video that I hoped not having to do it, but apparently we have to do it. We have to talk about motorsport games. We have to talk about the current situation around Le Mans Ultimate and the yeah, production of the game with um, motorsport games having laid off a couple of people out of the US, out of the UK from Q&A and from marketing department as far as we understand as per the official statement. So the question is how are we going to fix the future of Le Mans Ultimate, the future of Studio 397 and motorsport games effectively. And by saying how do we fix, um, I don't think that we can fix a lot here. It will be down to motorsport games fixing these situations. We're gonna dive a little deeper into the situation. So I know this isn't a black and white topic. This is very much levels that are worth discussing. So guys, what is your take on this? Uh, what do you expect and how do you see the current situation around MSG and the more ultimate slash R Factor 2? Guys, put it down in the comments area below. If you appreciate this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe on the YouTube channel, ring the bell, and now enjoy listening to further thoughts of me. I guess a lot of you guys have already seen all those dramatic videos about the end of Le Mans Ultimate and the, the, the go down of uh, motorsport games and like that all the effort was for nothing and it was so clear that they're going to fail, blah, 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 blah. Um, that hasn't happened, guys. That is not what we're seeing right now. Yes, we do know motorsport games are struggling. Um, I have had once again a look into the Q2 report that said the going concern, which is a fundamental part of uh, creating a balance sheet, which is a fundamental part of um, creating a year's end report, you always have to judge and honestly argue about your going concert pr principle. That is a principle literally saying um, the business is fine, the business is planned to keep going, there is no risks of the business to go out. That is what you find under a normal healthy company. Now for motorsport games it is the fact that they say going concern is a concern, is a uncertainty, is something that they cannot guarantee anymore which has been probably a part of that balance sheet over a couple of years. So money is going out of MSG. They're burning a lot of uh, money with salaries, probably licenses, and fees, other debts and so on. Long story short, they uh, have a really big deficit and it becomes bigger month by month, which is putting us into the situation that we find motorsport games right now in. Um, so that is it about the general situation. So. How do we get out of this? What are the exit strategies that we are looking forward to or hopefully looking forward to? Because, you know, we want Le Mans Ultimate and especially also R Factor 2 to survive. And there's a couple of things that we as a community can do. We as sim racers have the possibility to influence this outcome. And that is something very important. That is something that every one of us needs to understand and um, I mean, it's obviously a little bit of a tricky situation. But it, it took me a while to know exactly what I'm gonna, how I'm going to do this video. Um, and it is going to be majorly two things. The first is we're not done here. This is not the end yet. Le Mans Ultimate is not that at all, especially if you have a look into the current playing numbers which I'm showing you right now, uh, then you can see since the last update, there was a big push and a big upwards trend regarding the concurrent player numbers. Now, whether that remains the same over the next couple of weeks, we will see. But uh, at least you can see that there is still a general interest in, in the title. There is still a general interest in the game. Um, 
the big problem is as small and as niche the diehard sim racing industry within the overall racing game market is there is only so much we can do i mean we're probably talking about i don't know if i have a guess 60 maybe seventy thousand people that do own the more ultimate um now when you see only a thousand players playing concurrently then you'll be like oh that is a pretty big number still uh, we know it is above 50k because they mention it somewhere in in their reports um anyway there is still a shitload of people that are still hanging on the fence uh, regarding getting the game whether you wait for vr whether you wait for the gt3s whether you wait for i don't know a subscription service a custom servers or getting your league in whatnot whatever is keeping you hanging on the fence is effectively not helping the situation at all so as much as a couple of other sim racers have kind of ditched their home lately calling the thing the platform that has been their home for years a sort of dead or at the end of its lifespan moving over to let's say iRacing or Automobilista 2 I'm not going to do that because Le Mans Ultimate is not dead in fact it's anything else but dead uh, it is maybe not soaring or like Sorry, language barrier. It's maybe not like going over the moon, skyrocketing in the charts, but it is anything else but dead. The user numbers currently are not declining. They might be stagnating, but they still stay the same. And we can say this after the news of the layoff is now a good 10 days behind, or is a good eight days, uh, eight days past. So you still see the community enjoying and wanting to use the more ultimate and here's the thing if i were you still sitting on the fence i would finally buy the game support the studio support the msg situation give them a chance to finish off the project to finish off the game to somehow bring it over the line whatever happens with it afterwards um that is, I think, our responsibility as a community, what we can do in order to help out the Le Mans Ultimate uh, situation. I'm not going to recommend you to go for the season pass because, as you know, as the going concern is a concern, it might as well be, I don't know, the last month, the last two months of motorsport games may or may not happen. Um, I would not go with a four season pass unless you just want to wave off that money and just hope for the best however i will get each and every dlc still as it comes out because even if the company crashes even if this journey is coming to an end for motorsport games the game is going to remain on your pc whether you have something from it driving it offline maybe you find an, uh, you never know the system might break down someone be like you know what i'm gonna take the money, host the server for a year, and maybe we can still run a matchmaker. Like, you know, our sim racing community is very creative when it comes to such things. So unlike iRacing, which if that company goes down, you have spent three, four thousand dollars of money over the 10 years. Like, okay, that is maybe a bit extreme, but 2000. I have spent the loan 1.7 or 1.8k. That money's gone for good. You can't use the service. There is no service. If that company bails out, iRacing's gone dead. You have no assets, nothing that uh, reminds you what you've paid 1.8 thousand um, euro, 1.8k euros in my personal case. Um, so that is a very different situation when you look at Le Mans Ultimate, R Factor 2, Studio 397 as a whole. Uh, we're talking about a big, big different story there. That is, I think, what we as a community can do. Stop sitting on the fence, getting the game, buying new DLC as it comes, and that way support it. Um, what is the possible outcomes of this? And you guys know a couple of years back, I'm not sure if it is f 
five or six years back, uh, Project Cars was a game that asked for crowdfunding. Um, that would perhaps and potentially be something motorsport games might perhaps look into as well. I understand that MSG has probably a little bit of a negative name tag uh, or a negative stamp on it being like a bad company, which is like running out of business soon, burning the money, laying off people and so on. Why would you crowdfund them? Uh, what would be, yes, it's all be the outcome of the crowdfunding. That is, of course, a question MSG would need to answer. But I would see that as being a possible solution. Beyond that, um, what else can MSG do? On their official report, they are talking about strategic opportunities. Sadly, they don't specify what exactly they mean. However, they've indicated that they are open to um, to selling, they are open to asset deals, they are open to mergers and acquisitions, uh, which is leading me to the next point. Um, if there is an investor being like, I'm not just interested in getting the money, but I want to make sure that it's managed correct, so I better buy the entire company, so MSG plus 3397 plus the assets of RF2 and especially Le Mans Ultimate and finish off that game. Now, whether that is likely or unlikely, I have no idea. That is only something Stephen Hood or Motorsport Games in, a, in an official statement can tell you or can tell us. Um, as far as I understand though, and you see that also in the way the, the, the people that have laid off have spoken about the um, the project of Studio 397 with Le Mans Ultimate. Those guys are extremely saddened. They might be mad on MSG, but on the other hand, they are extremely disappointed to not be part of that project anymore because everyone at Studio 397 is 100% behind Le Mans Ultimate. They know it's about survival on one hand, but they are also passionate about the game and passionate about the result that we've seen so far. Because, let's face it, as much as we have iRacing and like probably the big monopoly in, in, in Die Hard simulated sim racing, there is still a lot of people be like, I came over from iRacing to Le Mans Ultimate and never gonna back, go back to iRacing because of its feel. And I don't even want to start the discussion whether the physics are now better on the more ultimate or whatnot. I'm just saying there is a shitload of potential um, for future revenue. So I think it is a possibility to invest into motorsport games or to, to, to find an investor that maybe buys the overall company and tries to get it put in it on track, changing different, uh, the, the business model and so on. This is all... That has to be part of that, I guess. So that is an opportunity. The next opportunity might be an asset deal. Asset deal is something that we've seen with uh, Fanatec and the indoor AG, uh, AG um, selling Fanatec, the property of Fanatec, the brand Fanatec to Corsair, receiving a certain amount of money, then going out of business or like going into a different business, but basically Corsair earned the rights to make use to sell, to operate Fanatec as a brand, as a manufacturer, as a business. Um, this is where developers like even iRacing, but more Ubisoft, and from my point of view, maybe the even, the even most potential part, EA, might come into it. Um, and I think EA might be an interesting one, and I'm just making this up, there is, no, there is no information about it, but if you think about it, like Motorsport Games is running F1 KD. at the same time EA is struggling with sales of their F1 game, which arguably is because of, of a bad quality of the engine, a bad quality of the game itself, bad coding and whatsoever. Now imagine if they like, you know what? With buying out the assets of Motorsport Games, we could get access to F1 Acadi and run that. We could also get access to Perfect Physics and make a great F1 game out of it. That would solve their issue with the FOM or with Formula One as a with Liberty Media. Um, and that is just thinking out wild, thinking out loud. 
whether MSG or whether um, Studi 397 and Lamore Ultimate are even something to consider for those companies is even a different story because it is like David versus Goliath in terms of size. So that is um, that is the situation on that end. Um, I don't know what is the most likely thing to happen, but I do know that as long as we as a community, as long as we, and there is a bunch of streamers out there, like at least 10 guys that are streaming Lamar Ultimate regularly, even James Baldwin came back from iRacing back into Lamar Ultimate being like, this is so much fun, this is so good to drive. And I don't really, like, I get why many people that have now left ACC may go over to iRacing, but I would have hoped at least some of them given Lamar Ultimate a proper chance. Yes, Lamar Ultimate has issues, it's still early access, we're still not having GT3s, but I think GT3s is going to be a game changer for the game, and I don't know exactly what is now the route of motorsport games. Um, personally, I would also support a subscription service as long as it offers private service, um, whether it's hosted of them or locally, I don't care, but just like the core possibility. So we could get leaks in, in a subscription service, uh, running custom liveries, um, just to, to, to mention a few kind of features that could potentially be on a paid um, subscription service. Um, Whatever you're going to find or see in the game in the future, the only thing that we can do is like keep enjoying it, keep playing it. Um, I know a lot of people will probably complain and be like, that's complete utter BS. And you see those comments everywhere around like, what is it about motorsport games being sale or sold or being going towards bankruptcy, whatever. Um, those comments will always be there. Uh, at the end of the day, we just need to do whatever is fun for us to do. And with that, I think I've, I've spoken a lot. I would appreciate, as I already mentioned, how you guys are looking about this, how you guys have in your opinion, your take on it. Put it down in the comments area below. Um, we're gonna have a little bit of a discussion and then we keep our fingers crossed because I still see a very good future for the more ultimate especially ahead.